Hey, what's going on everyone? Dominic, the primetime treasure hunter here. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the world's most dangerous book that I accidentally sourced at an estate sale. I'm going to tell you about the book and what I decided to do about it. I'm going to take you through my decision process. Now, this is something that I decided to make a video about because as resellers, we are sometimes going to come across situations in which we have to make decisions in which ethics and morality come into play, uh, certain principles that you have come into play, that others have come into play, and sometimes those run up against financial decisions and considerations. So these things don't always come together in harmony. Sometimes they conflict and you've got to have a way to make a decision about what to do. So that's why I put this video together, but I want to definitely know your thoughts uh, by the time this is over with. So be sure to leave a comment uh, down below afterwards. So um, let me tell you about the item. So I was at an estate sale and I go down to the basement and I walk into this dark room and there's a bookshelf and I come across a cookbook. Now, I don't normally source cookbooks. Once in a while I do. Uh, you've seen in other videos that I'll pick up a first printing of a vintage Betty Crocker or a first printing Joy of Cooking, or if there's something kind of oddball off the wall that strikes my interest that, you know, there's not many of on the market. So I grabbed this cookbook and this one certainly seemed oddball and strange to me. This one right here, it says the anarchist cookbook. I said, well, that's not any cookbook I've ever seen before. And has the word anarchist on it, which is interesting, you know, related to anarchy and stuff. I'm like, that that's kind of weird. Um, all else it says on the cover is by William Powell, introduction by Peter Bergman. So what do I do? Do what I always do. Grab my phone, type it into eBay, and I do a completed sold comp search on it. Now, remember, I'm in a competitive sourcing environment and I'm trying to move quick and get to the next item. So I'm trying to make a decision. Should I pick this up or not? And then just move on. So I type it in and I'll share the screen with you in a moment. But I see that there is a completed sale of this book with the exact same cover that sold on auction with 38 bids sold for right around $200. So $195 and change plus $3.99 shipping. So I'm like, oh my goodness, I found a rare book. Like this, this is great. So I put it in my box. I move on. I wind up getting the book for a dollar. And turns out that that was, if you just go by the comps, the best item that I found. So anyway, I get into the car afterwards and knowing this now that this is the most valuable item, I start to look into it in a little more detail. So now I look in the back and there's all this small print and stuff, but I focus on this box here that says warning on it. It says warning, read this book, but keep in mind that the topics written about here are illegal and constitute a threat. So now I'm like, illegal? A threat? I'm like, what did I get myself into here? It says also, more importantly, Almost all the recipes are dangerous, especially to the individual who plays around with them without knowing what he's doing. So now I'm like, oh my goodness, this has got to be something about explosives. So it says, use care, caution, and common sense. This book is not for children or morons, and that's written by the actual author. So, you know, I start flipping through it. Now, sure enough, this book was originally made in 1971 because it has this like 1970s look to it on the outside. This is a 1978 reprint of it. It was published by a company called Lyle Stewart, which you'll be able to see there on the bottom. And that's going to come up later. That's important. Lyle Stewart. And as I flip through it, there's all sorts of stuff in here that now, you know, when I look to it, it's crazy. Like for example, explosives and booby traps, you know, there's an entire section on, on drugs. There's an entire section on guns and how to make this sort of stuff. And there's, you know, another section on 
electronics, sabotage, and surveillance. You know, like it says on the back, all illegal activity. But then I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. How did this book just sell on eBay? And isn't this against eBay policy? So let me share my screen with you and, and show you what I'm talking about with the completed listing. So you could see it right here. It says Anarchist Cookbook 1971 version, but it's the 1989 Barricades book uh, books publication of it. And I'll make it bigger so you could see uh, the actual price better. But this is the sole price. I just want to show you it's, it had shown up as green. $195.50, $3.99 shipping. So there it is right there. So if we look for it right now on eBay, we don't see the actual book. We see some other kind of like knockoffs and stuff, but there's a more modern reprints of it that come over from England. Now, as it turns out, we're going to get to this later. There have been at least two people in England who have been arrested solely for possessing this book. Now, one of them was found not guilty, but that's how serious people take this. Now, is this book, by the way, against eBay's policy? Before I go into the book in more detail, it definitely is. And this is on eBay's uh, policy page for prohibited and restricted items. And this right here answers the question of whether or not this should be sold on eBay, because it, it tells you right here that anything that encourages or enables illegal activity is not allowed. We do not allow our members to use eBay to encourage or enable others to engage in illegal activity. That includes devices, but look here, it also includes information on how to use or make illegal drugs, bombs, or explosives. Now, I'm bringing this up for a reason because in my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center, I am consistently posting articles about people who get into legal trouble by making bad decisions because of greed. And I guarantee you that there are people out there who would be aware of this policy, but would still try to sneak this book under the radar on eBay to try to get $200 out of it, or even if they get $100 out of it or $50 out of it. Still, if you purchased it for, for a low price, you know you could make a good profit. But is it always all about the profit? Um, I would argue no. First of all, you have to follow the rules. And just because that person didn't get caught does not mean you are not going to get caught. That happens all the time. It's a frequent question. When people get their items taken down, they say, what the heck? Why was my item taken down? Why was I targeted when other people have the same listing up? It's a common thing. But again, it just goes back to eBay cannot get to every single listing, every single person. And sometimes things sneak through. But let me tell you a little bit about the book here. Okay, now, I recognize that doing this video, I might get some criticism because I'm bringing attention to the book. And that fair criticism, I'll take that, but I figured it's outweighed by some of the other stuff that I'm going to talk to you about here. Um, first of all, um, it seems like I was kind of in the dark about this because there's a lot of people who, who know about this book. This book has been published uh, it obviously it's out there. It's on the internet. Okay. So you could just go and get the PDF of it. If you want to, you, it, it's freely available. Um, you do not have to go out there and make a purchase, but sometimes, you know, people want a hardcover version or a soft cover version. They want a hard copy is what I should say. So, um, you know, they pick it up for that reason. And some people, you know, they like to go and they like to get one of the originals because, you know, they feel it's collectible or something like that. Um, but in this instance, I did not feel that this is something I could take a chance trying to sell it to somebody who would buy it as a collectible because you just don't know what the person is going to do with it. And again, it goes against uh, e eBay's policy. Now, if, if we go down here, if you just look, I'll just give you a couple of examples of people who have used this book for bad purposes. Number one, and I'm just going to come up with a couple examples. 1995, the perpetrators of the Oklahoma City bombing were alleged to have used directions from this book. I just talked to you in the prior video that I lived in Oklahoma City for a year. And I went to the, um, uh, the site of the bombing and the memorial site. 
And you literally cannot walk out of that site without being in tears. I think it's just practically impossible because at the end you see all the shoes of the babies who died and everything. It's the saddest, saddest thing. So that's number one, you know, that hit home for me, just me having a personal experience of being at that site and seeing, you know, what happened there. Um, 1999 police found the anarchist cookbook in possession of the Columbine high school shooters. Um, And it says it's believed that the uh, killers drew inspiration from the text. And there's all sorts, as you can see here, there's all sorts of other examples of this being used in uh, international terrorism and all sorts of uh, all sorts of things. So, you know, one of the things you have to consider is if you know something you sell winds up in the hands of somebody who does something bad with it, it even though that might necessar- not necessarily be your fault per se, because you're not the person who who did it. Um, you, and even though you might not get in any legal trouble about that, you still have to think in your mind: Are you personally comfortable with that? you supplied that book to that person. Yes, they might have found it someone else. I know all those arguments. But personally, for me, I would not be comfortable with that. That's just another level on top of it. Now, something else to take into consideration is that the author of this book wrote this book when he was a teenager. He wrote it as a protest to the United States involvement in the Vietnam War. But then... Powell converted to Anglicanism in 1976, and he wanted the book removed from circulation. But he had a problem. The problem was, and this gets back to Lyle Stewart, the publisher. The publisher had the rights. He had he had basically signed the rights over to them. And so they continued to publish the book until another company acquired in 1991. Now, the next thing to consider, which is interesting, is that the legality of the book itself has been questioned in several jurisdictions, which raises all sorts of interesting, this is what I talked about earlier with principles, because I am absolutely a huge person when it comes to free speech. Uh, I I firmly believe in it, stand up for it like crazy. Um, I have a real big problem about when, you know, comic books were, were burned, uh, you know, back in the uh, the golden age, because people believed that they were, you know, contributing to you know bad things in society and stuff like that, and they just tried to get rid of all of them. Um, so I, I have a big problem with that sort of stuff. But in those instances, the authors themselves didn't want their their books being removed. This author literally campaigned to get all copies of this book destroyed and removed. Didn't didn't want them. Not only has he, but other politicians have as well have tried to to lobby to get this book even removed from online circulation. Now, um, the FBI uh, has reviewed the book, and um, they actually uh, have a a quote about the book, which, which talks about it being as one of the, and this is a quote from the FBI, as one of the crudest, lowbrow, paranoid, referring to paranoid, writing efforts ever attempted. Um, Now, interestingly, it says, while having concerns about the text, the FBI concluded that it could not be regulated as it was published through mass media. Um, And and in addition to that, it says, furthermore, the FBI ruled that the anarchist cookbook does not incite forcible resistance to any law of the United States and is therefore protected under the First Amendment, which is interesting because if you read about what the author says about the book, he actually talks about um, him advocating violence as a way to solve problems um, you know, with the culture he perceived in the United States at the time. So it does say, while much of the text was deemed to be inaccurate, the FBI concluded that the chapter on explosives appears to be accurate in most respects. Since the conception of the book, the FBI has kept records of it, releasing the bulk of its investigation file in 2010, which then relates to another issue. And I've heard about this before with other controversial books. If you sell a book like this on eBay, what do you think the chances are that your name gets put into a database 
uh, in the FBI. And I'm not saying that to sound paranoid. Like that's like a realistic thing that sometimes happens is that they are trying to keep track of where these books go, who had them, who's supplying it, because as it even says on the back of the book, it constitutes uh, a threat. So, um, you know, it's, it's a major, um, it's a, it's a major problem. And I started to have huge concerns about just being in possession of the book. Now I have not found any instance of anyone in the United States who was arrested for possessing it. But again, the last thing that I need is even for like a neighbor to come over and accidentally like see the book, like, you know, sitting out or something like that. You know, you just don't, it's just not something I need to have. And it's not something that I'm going to sell. Now you could say, all right, well, don't sell it on eBay, sell it off of eBay, sell it on local marketplace or something like that. You know, Hey, you can make 200 bucks, that kind of thing. You know, again, this is where all these ethical issues and, and moral issues come into play. Um, in terms of the latest status with the book, in terms of publication, um, Stewart, Lyle Stewart kept publishing the book until it was bought out in 91 by a guy named Stephen Shragas. And then he decided to drop it. Now he had um, 2000 books that he was publishing and it was the only one that he decided to stop publishing. Um, he said that, and this is getting to what I was talking about, that publishers have a responsibility to the public and the book had no positive social purpose that could justify keeping it in print. And that's coming from a publisher. Now, I had since gone on to just read article after article, after, I mean, legal article, everything just to learn about it. It's one of the things I like about reselling is I love learning stuff. And so I just kept you know, reading about it just because I just found the topic fascinating. And time and time again, what I continued to see, I just continued theme, I could not find anybody who was you know, of any solid reputation who was arguing to keep this book around, keep it in print and to, you know, to sell the book or anything like that. Uh, everybody seemed to agree that this book just really shouldn't be around, including um, the author. The author deeply regretted it. There's a whole big section on Wikipedia in terms of his remorse. He tried to do so much stuff in his life to kind of make amends for the book. He founded like a nonprofit organization to help children with developmental disabilities and learning disabilities and stuff. But, you know, one of the points that he made, and I want to bring this up too, to people who are younger who are watching this, teenagers who are watching this, young adults who are watching this, be very careful in terms of what you do, because you make one mistake, especially with social media these days, if you're in college, anything like that. Trust me, as I could tell you from someone working in a professional setting, those things will stick with you throughout your life. And it's very, very difficult and sometimes impossible to totally erase all evidence of it. So make your decisions very, very carefully. But um, with all of that in mind, with everything that you take into consideration, the only argument that you could make for selling the book is money. That's really it. You could try to make a free speech argument with it, but you know it does say it's protected against the First Amendment. But for me, in this instance, it's not like this is the only copy of the book around. There's plenty of them that are out there still. I mean, it's rare to find one of these ones from the 70s, um, but the actual you know, text of it is out there is my point. Um, so I don't feel like I'm destroying, you know, someone's words and knowledge and like erasing it from civilization or anything like that. It's not like I have the last existing one. So what am I going to do with this? I'll show you what I'm going to do with it. What I have here is my shredder. And it's time for me to do something that William Powell wanted with these copies of the book. So I am going to fulfill the author's desires, and I'm going to get rid of this. I am going to shred this. So I'm going to pull this apart right here. There you go. There's part of it. We're going to turn on this shredder right here. Move back a little bit. And we're going to say bye-bye to the Anarchist's cookbook. So... 
There's our first part right there. Now, let me know what you think about this. There might be some people out there watching this who totally disagree with what I'm doing. And if so, let me know that down below. A little thick for that section there. Let me know that down below and tell me your reasoning. Tell me your justification. If you would try, I doubt anyone's going to tell me they would try and sell it because it's obviously against eBay policy and it's obviously illegal. This part doesn't want to be shredded. It's illegal content, I should say. Is it illegal to sell it? Doesn't really, doesn't necessarily seem so. Uh, at least in the United States. But like I said, seeing that people were getting in trouble and literally getting arrested in England for selling it, that uh, to me is a huge uh, is a huge red flag right there. And I, again, like I said, I just don't I don't want to take, take any chances. So you know again, main concept, main theme is that you know money money is you know is good. We're all trying to get money, but there's some things that are more important than money. And uh, to me, the morality and the ethics and the the author's original um, or later intent in terms of what he wanted done with this, after realizing that he had made a mistake, all those things factor in just getting rid of this thing totally. So let's see if we can get some more in here. Come on, Anarchist Cookbook. There we go. I just want to get this documented that this is being shredded. See, the problem is you got this thick binding right here on the side. That kind of makes it hard to get it all through there. Get in there. There we go. This part. So um, don't forget. If you liked the video, if you enjoyed it, to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. <laughs> it's a weird ending. For those of you who don't know, there is a bell icon on the top. Hit that for notifications for when I go live. I can sure use an assistant right about now to do the rest of this. Here we go. Almost all got. We're just down to a few more pages, folks. Getting there. I should, by the way. Well, are we loaded up with paper? Might be. Might be filled up. A little more time left. Yeah, I think we loaded it up with paper here. Open it up. Let's see. Is down. Hold on, folks. Oh man. Yeah. It's all filled up. I'm gonna push it down a little bit more. Great. I got all these paper lint that just fell down. I smushed it down a little. Hopefully, get the last little bit in there. Let's go. Get in there. All right. That in there. Got this here. This here. Almost done, folks. Just got rid of it. Miss Primetime is going to be happy, by the way. She's like, get that book out of this house now. <laughs> so. And this is it. This is the last one. Come on. Get in there. Get in there. We did it. We did it. It's gone. And uh, that's the end of the story, folks. So again, uh, let me know your thoughts down below. And if you enjoyed the video, um, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. So uh, uh, by the way, if you've ever had any similar types of uh, items or situations you've been in, in which there were kind of like moral and ethical issues that came up, uh, let me know that down below uh, in the comment section too. So uh, we all help each other out when we 
you know, could give each other examples of what to do. And then you could think back to those types of things, you know, as kind of a model to keep in mind in terms of, you know, how you should handle something similar. So I hope it helps and I'll see you back the next one, everyone. Take care.